On the 7th of October 2008, a Qantas plane flying from Singapore to Perth declared a mayday to air traffic control. When it made an emergency landing at a small airport on the West Australian coast, it had on board more than 100 injured passengers and crew. They had broken bones, lacerations and spinal injuries, while compartment doors had been ripped from hinges and passengers' belongings were strewn throughout the cabin. Less than an hour earlier, passengers with and without their seatbelts on had impacted the cabin ceiling when the plane had twice dropped several hundred feet without warning. A sudden loss of height, the plane being thrown around in the air and the screams of those around you. For Qantas, which boasted an unparalleled flight safety record, this was completely out of the ordinary. The media was quick to blame the accident on clear air turbulence, but what really happened to the plane was something far more disturbing. QF-72 was an Airbus A330 plane that was just one hour and a half from its destination when all hell broke loose. The flight's captain, Kevin Sullivan, was a former US Navy fighter pilot. At the time of the accident, he had over 13,000 flying hours in his logbook. When I re returned to the flight deck, uh, I knew that we were flying at 37,000 feet. The body angle was two degrees above the horizon. The flight control computers, however, thought we were flying at 50 degrees body angle and over speeding at the same time. Now we know that's pretty impossible. It says that's where we're flying, we're flying like this, I must protect the airplane. So it pitched the nose down, it went from plus two to minus 8.4 in less than a second. Look what the tail's doing. If you're back there, you're gonna feel the force. What Captain Sullivan was coming up against was a change in how airplanes have been made in the last 30 years. Traditional jumbo jets such as the Boeing 747 are controlled by the pilot through mechanical connections to the hydraulic systems which move the flight control surfaces, that is, the rudder, the elevator and the ailerons. But the Airbus A330 is what's known as a fly-by-wire system, where there is no such manual control. Instead, the pilot's controls make requests of a computer, which sends electronic signals in order to move the flight controls. Fly-by-wire planes are lighter and more fuel efficient. They're also capable of executing faster and more precise movements than humans, and they reduce the chance of pilot error by preventing the plane from exceeding certain limits, known as the flight envelope. It is the flight computer's protection modes that prevent the aircraft from exceeding the flight envelope, and when they became active, they blocked Captain Sullivan's attempts to stop the computer's command. It's like 2001 a Space Odyssey. Al, open the, the pod bay doors. I'm sorry, Dave. I can't let you do that. I'm saying, don't push the airplane down. I'm pulling back on the stick. The computers are saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Kev. I'm not going to let you do that. But the fact is that fly-by-wire planes have actually made air travel much safer. In the past decade, the number of commercial passenger flights has surged, while the number of fatalities in plane accidents has fallen. But in the case of flight QF-72, the manufacturer's design prevented the pilot from overriding the computer's control. In the A330 course, you're taught you must interact. You can interact with the plane. It's great, and when it works, it's great. But when it doesn't work, you're in, the, you're in the dark. An investigation by the Australian Transport Safety Bureau found that one air data computer was sending incorrect body angle and speed information to the three primary flight control computers, which reacted to the data by forcing the plane to pitch down. The flight maintenance log revealed that 10 simultaneous faults had occurred during the accident, and most of these had been hidden from the pilots. The hierarchy of, the, of this particular airplane is that the computer is number one and the pilot is number two. If they, for example, decide that you're overspeeding and stalling and they're going to protect you, there's no right to veto that. But for Captain Sullivan, there's a bigger question left to be answered, and it's not just about the computers on board flight QF-72. As we start to trust computers with delivering our goods and even driving our cars, just what level of control should we keep for ourselves? I've never even, in all the extreme flying I did in the military, did I ever say to myself, hey, you're in trouble. Those are very profound words for a pilot to admit to himself, as I did, and saying, yeah, I'm going to have to, I'm, I'm in a knife fight with this airplane, and only one person's gonna win, or one computer's gonna win. 